breaking barriers of resistance, holding back whatever it is, whatever resistance you're having, whether it's resistance. I hope these ads don't go on while we're recording, but if they do, it is what it is. We keep it moving. We don't try to control. <laughs> Let that be a lesson there. Anyway. Resistance. Now, resistance can be go two ways. Resistance can be resistance from receiving or resistance from output, giving. And so this call is subjective. You can internalize it however you want, whether it's value to you in receiving or giving. Resistance, releasing resistance is what's going to open the flow of both of those receiving, attracting, and giving, releasing. Overcoming resistance to achieve breakthrough. Now, when I say breakthrough success, success can be anything. Success can be material success. It can be spiritual success. For me, success is a collection of all areas of our health, right? When we talk about mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, financial, social, social health, having a nice balance between all six of those is what I define as success. And so for me, I'm always realizing there's always work to do, right? I go back to the gym. I start working out. Oh, wait, now I got to work. I forgot. I got to put more work in my spirit, right? Oh, I've been meditating and, and journaling. Hold up. I got to, I got to take some time and put energy here and here. And I got to start, you know, connecting with people again and social health and all these different things. And so it's always a work in progress. There's always, there's always the next step. It's always the next objective. I feel like what holds people back and what creates resistance, especially, and I'm projecting because that's all I can do, is um, knowing that there's going to be more, right? And so this held me back for some time. Like, oh man, I know by stepping into this plate or stepping into this thing, that's not the end of it. That's just the beginning of it. Even though I can't see that other side yet, I already know there's another side. And so there's resistance. Now, for me, it wasn't so much about knowing that it was the other side it was no it was realizing what i was doing with my life right where i was working and realizing those uh, those things because it doesn't matter what you do there's always going to be that right but when you know you're in a place where you don't want to be and you know that taking taking more steps in the direction you're at knowing there's going to be more obligation and in, in, in things in the future is it's exhausting it's like you don't want to do nothing you're like fuck this right and so i get it i used to work i used to work 10 12 hour days like doing things that i genuinely didn't love i get it <laughs> i used to work a lot i'm a workaholic not everybody is i am whatever i'm working on i'm a work some i yo I, this is how much i i knew it was an issue when i <laughs> when i had to start setting alarms to eat like damn like <laughs> I could be hungry as hell, bro. And I just don't want to stop until I finish this thing. It's crazy. So I'm working on it. Okay, guys, trust me. We all got things we need to work on. I need to work on not working. <laughs> but point is, the reason why I'm capable and the reason I do that now is because I genuinely love what I'm doing. Every part of what I'm doing comes in alignment to what I believe in. And so when I realize there's these humps that are going to come and these additional things, these additional steps, it's all good. I, I it, it comes with the territory. But I love what I'm doing now, even though it's hard as fuck. And that's why not many people do it. That's why they say in, in order to attract things, not many people have. You got to do things not many people are willing to do. And that's why you have to believe in what you're doing to even get to that position. Because if you just like, nah, man, I'm just trying to hustle. I'm trying to get the get to the bag. All right, bro, grind to your death. I promise you, I'm probably going to get farther than you. And I could probably walk slower. All right. It's the whole rabbit and turtle thing like i'm in my steady pace because i know where i'm going i know who i am i know what i believe in and i know why i'm doing what i'm doing bigger than just what i receive materially what i receive spiritually from what i'm doing this that's was that's was that's was allowing me to push forward right anyway going back to what i was saying i can go on tangents so i'm trying i'm gonna try to stay on track here i got some notes that i have just in case i go way too left i usually don't but I can talk for like sidetrack sometimes. So anyway, keeping the authenticity. This is which this is what you get live and <laughs> live in action. Ten to twelve hour days is what I was talking about, right? I get it, right? Now I'm a big Bruce Lee fan. Um, I was always motivated by the six inch punch, right? What is the six inch punch for those who don't know? Again, it's just literally like hand on your chest and then just slight subtle motion subtle force 
but massive impact. And so I always questioned, I was like, how, like, how is this man who is clearly fit, but not that big? How is he able to put so much force in by working so little? And it made me realize like, I used to put in a lot of force working day and day and day and day out so much. And I was just getting little in return. I wasn't getting that much money. I definitely wasn't getting that much fulfillment. It was a lot of force, but there was little power. And that's why I was inspired by Bruce Lee because that six inch punch, again, is such little power, such little force, but massive power. And so that's where I connect this concept of letting go of resistance to attract more, letting go of resistance to become more. I had to realize that sometimes you just have to relax, trust that everything is taken care of, trust that it will take care of itself, especially the things that are outside of your control. The problem is we get so tied up on what we can't control that then we lose control of what we actually can control. Where you put your attention to, you lost control of that because you were so focused on trying to control something you cannot even control. So think about it like this, cadence, right? Cadence, consistency, longevity. The greatest athletes in the world have the greatest cadence, right? Cadence equals pretty much what? Rhythm. So there's a perfect rhythm and concept. So you think about like a long distance runner, like there's has to be a cadence. There has to be a rhythm in order for that to sustain. Cause if he sprinted from the beginning, he would not get there. He would burn out. And that's the same thing with resistance. We need to understand resistance makes stronger. Whatever it is you're resisting, whatever it is that you're preventing is going to become stronger. And so again, it goes both ways, whether it's a resistance of receiving or a resistance of giving or releasing. How it holds us back from just becoming our greatest version, becoming the person we were meant to be. You're connecting to your higher self. So look, let's get into what we're talking about today. Ultimately is about how to overcome resistance. Everything that I spoke about is, is connected to it. It's value in itself, but now we're going to get into our key points. So for my note takers, this is where you want to start taking notes, right? Number one, what I was talking about, how to release re resistance, how to attract more, how to become more is to come out and show up in your raw and authentic self. Why do I say this? Well, because in my early journey of trying to become a creator, trying to become a, a big brand. I used to spend hours and hours and hours like over editing my content, trying to make things fix, fix, fix videos, fix like um, my writing, fix these little micro issues. And then I realized, holy shit, like my whole day is over, right? I spent all this time creating this content and now my whole day is done. And it's not just about time, it's just about connection. Cause once I stopped, once I stopped over editing, guess what? I started growing exponentially. I, I, I had a minor, like maybe I'll have a post that like has minor grammatic issues, like a period is missing or a comma is missing. Oh man, I don't stress about it. I don't feel like, damn, I gotta like delete it and post it and do it all this, keep it going. Guess what? Some of those even blew up, became viral posts. Like it just happens. Um, but because there's an authenticity to it, there's an, in, there's an energy to it. So think about this video right now. You see, you already seen me kind of like, you know, <laughs> messing up here and there or whatever, going off tangent somewhat, but it's okay. Cause it's just who I am. And I know where my heart is. My heart is coming from a place of sharing along my journey, sharing what's helped me along my journey. I don't know if it's going to help you. I don't know if this is going to be your truth, but I know that it's helped me. So I think it might, that's as far as I know. So the question here is, are you editing every aspect of your life? Like it's not just about content, right? This is where we get deep. This is where, oh shit, geez, not just talking about the creators and the, the, you know, content creator, he's talking about everybody. Like, yes, every aspect of your life, how much are you editing, right? How we edit our lives in real life is also, you got to realize is, is showing people what we think they want to see. That's 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 what happens when you're in a position where you feel you need to edit everything in your life to show that you have a perfect life or whatever it is we're showing people what we think they want to see but do you really know what they want to see do you even care i mean clearly you probably do but look the truth is most people are so caught up on their own shit they probably were not even thinking about you like we have these opinions that oh shit they might think i'm this way they think i'm that way they're thinking of, bro i promise you they not even thinking about you. I, it's, it sounds like damn G, but like not nah, real life. 
no sugar coat keep it moving right so when you live an unedited organic lifestyle cool bet like you know they were thinking about me or they weren't bet whatever like either way it's a beautiful thing because i didn't have to pretend to be anybody i wasn't nor did i have to spend more energy than i had to to show up as me there's only number one man come on all right look type a one in the chat if you already resonate with um, point number one if you have any connection to that whether it's in your story in somebody you know whatever it may be i got a reflection question for you now how can i start showing up more to my true self in my daily interactions it could be one subtle thing it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be a whole list that doesn't have it can it doesn't have to be a whole schedule just one subtle thing. I'm going to make this micro change. This one thing. I'm going to keep my phone off in the morning and stop scrolling. It doesn't matter what it is. Something subtle. Write it down. Ask yourself. If I could have a better life. if Or if you're like, gee, I don't know. This is what you can say. You can ask yourself. If I could be closer to my higher self, to my true self, what is one additional thing I can add into my lifestyle that'll make that happen? If I could. If you already feel like you, you, your truest self, highest self, kudos to you, bet. That's what we're here for. But if not, if you could, what would it be? So as you continue to think about that, let's get into number two. So that's why I say, just write the question down. You can answer it later or you can answer it now. Whatever you want to do, we're here for it. Number two is releasing the need to control, right? So in order to release resistance, what do we got to do? We have to restructure and we have to restructure the reality around what we perceive, what we understand that we have control over and don't. I have no control over who watches my content, who subscribes, who follows me on Instagram. I got no control over that. And so when I stopped, when I stopped the need to resist and control that, that's when I started growing. And what I do have control over is what output I put out. So the amount of content I put out, the amount of connection, the amount of vulnerability, the truth that comes from my heart, I have control over that. And so as long as I feel good about what I'm outputting, I don't care about the input, whatever happens, happens, right? But again, I, the reason why I'm sharing this, and I know there's not a lot of people who may be content creators or people who want to build like brands, like the love change, just everyday people like a mother like it doesn't matter who you are this connects because the thing is a lot of times it can happen in relationships right it can happen in in day-to-day -day interactions where we're trying to convince people for whatever reason we're trying to win them over right why who I, I stopped trying to convince people i stopped trying to win people over because i know the right people will be here i don't need to convince you who i am I know who I am, right? And what I realized is <laughs> the only thing that actually matters is how I had to perceive myself. Not even just in knowing this, but just perception, right? Because I know myself, but I also have a perception of myself because I realized there are infinite amount of other perceptions of me. People look at me and they can see, oh, this guy looks like this, or they know me and they're like, oh, G is like this. Geo makes me feel like this, whatever it may be. There's so many perceptions of you, but that doesn't matter. You don't need to win everybody over and try to val check it off the checklist. Like, all right, this many people know me for me. Who the fuck cares what they know? Who knows you? Who accepts you? Resistance. Why are we resisting? Look, if you look in the mirror and you think you're amazing, I can't control that, <laughs> right? You're amazing. So what you want to do is notice how your body reacts. To, to any form of resistance, right? Your body's gonna tighten up. You feel like... So there's a reflection to that, right? My reflection to that point is, in which ways in my life do I need to let go of control to improve how I feel about myself and my interactions with others? How to release, how to let go of resistance and attract abundance and become who you're meant to become. Just because it's good for you doesn't mean you should eat it. What are you talking about? Gee, I'm supposed to eat this broccoli. I fucking hate it, but I'm meant to eat it. Nah, listen, look, I don't eat certain fruit. I don't eat certain vegetables. I don't like olives. I don't really eat watermelons like that, right? And that's fine. 
and granted those things are good for you watermelons great fruit great you know certain fruit i eat a lot of fruit but there's certain things i just don't like and the the the, the key here in the the connection to resistance is realizing that there's certain things that could be good for you but you may not have a desire for them right and so we're in resistance because we're trying to convince ourselves oh wait now nah, but i gotta do is healthy but the truth is it's not just about why you're it's not it's not just about what you're consuming but it's also about how you feel right when you're consuming it this is why this is why food is so important to life to just ex the human experience it's not just about feeding your body to be to have to be, have energy right it's about an experience and that goes with so many other things so realize that like yes you want to create a plan for yourself to be healthy i'm not saying this all the shit you don't like find ways to uh, to appreciate things number four how to let go of resistance is to stop comparing and wanting things just because other people have it. like oh man lucy got that thing now i want that thing who cares about it you know what the secret is we don't attract what we want we never do we only attract what we are who are you right what frequency are you in body and so in order to attract at a high level and release the resistance i had to start embodying that same frequency of what of what it is that i was working towards so look on a practical level how did i do this i wanted a good life i wanted a happy life i wanted a a, a, a fulfilled life but I wasn't in the career that I wanted at the time. I wasn't around the right people that I felt good around all the time. But I realized what I can change, I can't change how other people act. I can't change how much this job is gonna pay me. I can change myself, keyword change. I can keep my posture up. I can raise my confidence. And so there's when I realized, holy shit, that's when I began embodying the same frequency of those who were living the life I desired. And I wasn't even at the point yet. I was just already feeling it. And so, you know, coming down the line of growing and becoming and, and now living in, in parts of that that I desired years ago, I realized, hold up, those people living a good life, that's an illusion in your mind. That's an illusion because you're in a league of your own. That's when I realized, oh, I don't have to want anymore i don't have to want at that moment i stopped wanting <laughs> like everything everything started coming in my way opportunities connections more challenges but way more blessings so it became worth it so why is that though nobody knows i can't even tell you the universe works in mysterious way god works in mysterious ways so that goes to my fifth point embodying the frequency you desire to attract the less that i worry about money the more that it flows in my life. This is a concept known as magic money. Money isn't magic. Money doesn't just fall out of trees. We know this. But magic money is realizing that money based on your energetic bank balance, where you start to take action to attract physical money based off the amount you have in your energetic bank balance. Let me give you a perfect example to understand this concept. If you wanted to invest money, let's say in stocks, right? What do you have to do? Just ask for stocks? Nah, you got to spend money. You got to buy the stock. And then you have to hope that you made a calculated decision that is going to dictate where the market is going to go. Hopefully it goes up so that you can sell the stock and make money off of what you purchased. Now, when I say magic money, I'm talking about making a conscious decision to make physical money based off investing my energetic bank balance so i'm like hold up i have this much energy i'm willing to invest half of that energy right now to work on this business because i know that this job is temporary i'm not trying to be at this job forever i need to build my own shit. i'm willing to take that investment but i'm not over here like oh i just gotta hustle i gotta hustle i gotta grind i gotta grind because then i burn out right this is why so many people quit it's not that there's it's not that there isn't enough motivated people out there i promise you there's a lot of fucking motivated people not many people who actually understand how to keep going some people just quit because they just don't believe in themselves some people quit because they don't have the knowledge to properly balance their energetic bank balance because it's it you have to take this is what they call calculated risk 
in order to invest and make money, you have to take calculated risk. But in order to grow in any area of your life, you have to take calculated risk. How much energy are you willing to invest? If you don't have enough energy to invest, then don't do it yet. Don't feel like you have to just keep up with the Joneses. Like, you don't got the energy for it. And I'm not even just talking about money. You don't have the physical energy to hustle at night. You need to get your sleep. Some people do. I could work all night, but I don't because I know I'm playing the long game. I'm not to, I'm not trying to sprint and die. So even though I have the energy right now to work all night and hustle, I don't want to spend that energy. I don't want to invest that energetic bank balance. I'm playing the long game. Let's continue. So I feel amazing when I'm in environments that serve me. Come on now. I'm in my studio. We talking, we vibing, we healing, we're growing. It's a beautiful thing right and so this is what you got to understand in relation to your energetic bank balance because being in environments which serve you is going to raise your energetic bank balance increase that amount so that you can invest more i'm in a i'm in a surplus right now where like there's so much energetic balance energetic amount of money coming into my life my vibe that i'm just pouring back out it's a beautiful thing this is what i do i, I position myself in that direction so i can do that and so you got to ask yourself, where am I surrounding myself with, right? Who am I surrounding myself with? This is why some people have no money, but they're richer than most people. They're rich in fulfillment. They're rich in happiness. They're rich in love. But then there's some people who are wealthy beyond measure, but they're more depressed than most of us. The key is finding equilibrium in both. Some people say, nah, I just need one. Cool, man, that's subjective. For me, it's the internal and external wealth. That is what I move towards. I move towards the reflection of the internal and external wealth number six stop catering to the crowd if you want to release resistance stop catering to the crowd start embodying who you are 100 percent right realize that you don't need to be a gladiator in the arena what is the gladiator i just watched the movie gladiator the gladiator is the one who needs to win the people over you don't need to win nobody over you're good you have your freedom right in the beginning this is was this was me that's why i'm projecting this i was trying to be everyone i was trying to attract everyone i was trying to please everybody and then i wasn't attracting followers i wasn't attracting subscribers i wasn't it was i wasn't growing my community but i was trying to please every i was trying to win the crowd and then again that's when i was like i took a step back i was like nah let me just embody who i am like who am i as geo right what's my true nature and then naturally that's when things started to happen attracting exactly those who aligned with me so what i'm saying is when you have nothing you try to do everything you try to become everybody you're trying to find whatever it is i get it because i was there now when i when you feel you have everything you don't have to do nothing i don't got to do nothing i'm chilling i'm vibing I'm just here because I choose to, not because I have to. And that's what I'm talking about. I don't have to do nothing. I'm here because I choose to. So, you know, some people may say like, oh, put some respect on my name, prop, whatever that's coming from, right? Forget that. You don't need, res you just need to respect yourself. Like everybody's trying to say, put respect on your name. Just respect yourself. And nothing is as personal as you think. That's what I'm trying to tell you number seven is to realize you don't always have to argue about it man if this is not the foundation of resistance you don't have to argue about it because resistance is created when we're trying to convince people because we're not secure in what we believe in or what we're talking about so now you have to make sure that everybody else is in the same page as you i get it because <laughs> that was me that was me talking about shit that I wasn't secure about, trying to make sure everybody want, was won over, right? Fuck that. Once you know what you know, then you don't have to argue with people about it. You can agree to disagree or you could just not say anything at all. Fuck it. You're right. Keep it moving, right? That's the fastest way I exit that kind of situation. You're right. Peace. Releasing resistance. Number eight, we're talking about always moving outside of your comfort zone this is the foundation this is where you begin this is where you grow this is where you flow i'm telling you right now the comfort zone is where most people stay most people stay there that's all i'm saying i'm saying that so you can reflect on yourself who am i 
what person am I? How have I moved? And the hardest thing to know is that is that you've been comfortable yourself. Sometimes we can't even realize that we're in a comfort zone. And that's the scariest thing. That's the scariest thing to be in, I promise you, is being in the comfort zone and not even knowing it. <sighs> Fuck. The hardest place to, it's the hardest place to get out of at that point. But it's possible, right? You just have to go through that, that um, you have to go through the unplugging phase, right? Call it whatever you want, but I'm just thinking, I'm connecting this back to just like the matrix, like the matrix of the social conditionings, the, the subconscious programming, all the things that we grew up to to perceive and believe and whatever justified or not it's a lot of unlearning before we can really you know tap into that if we're in that position now resistance is natural especially when we're going into new places we're going back to the comfort zone but this was me along my early journey i realized that being open to new experiences allowed resistance to reside I was like, you know what? This is my situation. Whether it was out of circumstance or choice, I embrace it and resistance subsided every single time. A lot of us create more resistance because we're so closed off to these new experiences. Sometimes we're even afraid to show who we really are. Maybe we feel vulnerable and then we try to create a persona. We try to create this persona to, to show people that, oh yeah, we are strong and we're hard. So the solution there is just to become more vulnerable. The more vulnerable you are, the less resistance can exist because you're not suppressing your emotions. When you suppress your emotions, then you're creating resistance. And that's why I always say vulnerability is your superpower because it's a superpower because it's going above fear. You have to rise above fear in order to choose to be vulnerable. And by choosing to rise above fear is the most powerful thing you can do. You are fearless, you are growth, you are light. Let's keep it moving. Number nine is to avoid the Cinderella effect. What are we talking about? We are closing up and we're getting there. We're getting deep now. Avoid the Cinderella effect. What does that mean? Stop trying to find people who are not meant for you. Stop trying to position yourself in environments that are not serving you. If the shoe doesn't fit, you need to stop trying to force it. Trust the people, the right people will find you, right? Because the shoe should be a perfect fit in everything you do. If it doesn't, then you know this is temporary. And if it's temporary, you need to be conscious about how much energy you're willing to invest, how much energetic bank balance. And why is that important? Think about it like a job. Okay, this job, uh, it's not a perfect fit but I know I need to pay my bills right now. And I know that I want more for myself. All right. Am I willing to spend the energetic bank balance on it? Do I have the amount for it? Maybe I don't, maybe I can't work overnights and shit like that. Whatever the schedule may be for whatever it is, you don't have the energy for it. It's not worth it. People avoid that. So that's why they burn out and they stay where they are. You need to recognize that, be aware of it. Take some kind of action to feel confident that you're not wasting your energy. You're not wasting your time. Number 10, letting go of resistance. Forget the shoulda, coulda, please, right? I shoulda, could, I shoulda done that, man. I shoulda said that. I could've, I could've, you know, I could've done this or I could've been there. Who the fuck cares, man? No, like I said in the beginning, most people don't care. They're worried about their own shit. So shoulda, coulda, throw that shit out the window. Embrace this beautiful moment. You are here because of your mistakes. You are here because of your achievements. Doesn't matter where, where it stems from. This is where you are. Shoulda, coulda, doesn't matter. You are exactly where you're meant to be. You are allowed to be a masterpiece and a work in progress at the same time. Let love guide you at all times. It's a day we never seen before and a day we'll never see again. So I hope y'all continuing to take care of yourself, push forward with love, with light for protection, awareness, and guidance. Can we drop some threes in the chat if you learned something today you got some good energy today you feeling good today whatever the case may be drop a three in the chat if you some kind of level of high energy good energy has been brought into your life from choosing to be a part of this experience 